how to make a really cute pig puppet. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue, all of the dolls will make it shake. If you want to be in the know and to play like a pro, subscribe to Kutinger Puppets. Adam Krutinger here, and today I'm going to teach you how to put together a pig puppet. Even though this is the bacon pig pattern, your character doesn't have to be a pig. I've seen people use this pattern to make all kinds of crazy characters. Even by just using fur instead of fleece, you would end up with a really crazy looking character. Now, even though this puppet looks cute and simple, it's actually one of the toughest patterns on my website. If this is your first time making a puppet, definitely don't start here. In fact, you don't have to spend anything for a pattern. I have a ton of free patterns on my website. I highly recommend starting with those first before you tackle this project. And if you do want to do one of the more advanced builds, definitely start with the fried frog. It's much easier than this. Even the small fry pattern is a little bit easier too. Now you could easily make this pattern yourself by using the techniques in my main tutorial series. Now if you click here to check out my main tutorial series, you can actually learn how to make this kind of pattern all on your own. But if you want to save time and help support this channel, you can download this pattern from my website. And you're also going to need a bunch of supplies. You're going to need some half inch foam. I get this from foamonline.com. But you you could also use the green cushion foam from any craft store. I like to use fleece with this project. Any color will do. I like to use some headliner fabric or some thick felt for the ears. You'll also need a black piece of felt. And there's a lot of things you can use for the mouth plate, but I like to use this rubber. It's a gasket rubber and I have a link down in the description to it. And of course you can use any supplies you want for the features. All right, now that we have our supplies, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna have to do is print out your pattern. Some of the pieces you might have to attach together to look more like that. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is start tracing out the pattern pieces. Make sure that you are tracing the foam pieces. Every piece is labeled, whether it's foam or fabric, and it tells you how many to cut. While you're tracing, also make sure to carefully trace the notches. Those are gonna make sure the pieces go together evenly. It's gonna come in real handy when you're gluing. This body piece can be mirrored on the center line, so you can either cut two of them out or just flip it right on that line and trace it out as one piece. Today I'm gonna to make this one piece. Now that the foam pieces are all traced, we're gonna start cutting them out. The best way to cut foam is with a Persona razor blade like this. But since I'm using half inch foam, it's okay to cut out some pieces with scissors as well. If you're using scissors, just make sure to pay extra close attention that your scissors are perpendicular to your foam. All right, let's cut it out. Okay, now that we have our pieces cut out, let's start gluing them together. Now when you're gluing, it's important to line up the registration marks on the foam pieces. Lining this up on the foam pieces is what makes this go together so well, kind of like a puzzle. While I'm gluing this together, if you have any questions, make sure to check out this video here. It's an in-depth video on the type of glue that I use and the best ways to apply it. But you might just get the hang of it by following along. Now there's two major parts that you have to glue. One of those parts are all the seams. That's where pieces come together. The other parts are darts. Darts are the places where the foam goes together that's all on a single piece. So in the main body piece, there is a dart at the top of the head and at the bottom of the body. And on the front here, there's two at the bottom. So again, I'm gonna do all my darts together first, then put the rest of the pieces together. Now I'm gonna push these darts together just like this and make sure the bottom edges line up evenly. Same on top of the head. And the bottom darts. Now that those darts are all together, I'm gonna glue along the side seams. Okay, now that that glue is dry, I'm gonna attach this here and make sure to line up the bottom and all of those notches. These notches up here go to the mouthpiece later. Make 
Make sure to line up those darts as well. And just like that, that's the main part of the body for the pig. Now that we have most of the body complete, now we have to attach this little mouthpiece here. This little mouthpiece attaches and connects to these notches right here underneath. I'll glue it in right now so you can see better. Okay, once it's dry, you can connect it right in here. And again, make sure to line up those notches the best you can. So one on that side and one on this side. And this piece is meant to hold in the mouth plate better. Now the next part is attaching this little snout. Now depending on how you want your pig to turn out, there's a couple different ways that you can attach this. I've seen some people kind of scrunch this up a little bit and glue it straight to the top like that. I've seen some people fit it inside of the entire snout just like this. That works well too. And making these different choices will make your character look different. This can actually come in big handy, especially if you're making a show like, let's say, The Three Little Pigs. It would be very fun to make all the pigs exactly the same with just a slightly different size snout to give them each their own unique personality. But this is the way I like to do it. I like to put it flat on this lower part and inside of the upper part. Because if you notice the way that the notches go together, there's actually a little bit of a step here, just enough room for the foam. So it slides in like that, protruding on the bottom, but not on the top. But again, any of those methods will work. So let me glue this on. All right, now let me place that in. Make sure to line up that top notch first. and it will all just fall into place. Now there's a little bit of goofiness going around this corner. All I do is just give it a little pinch and that foam just sticks to the side there. That gives you a nice good silhouette, just like that. The next piece I like to do is the mouth plate. For that I get a piece of that rubber that I told you about earlier. Again, there's a link down in the description. Now just line this up with the edges here and trace it. Make sure to mark the top notch and the bottom notch and of course the sides too. Then go ahead and cut it out. I also like to gently rub the edges with some sandpaper so that the glue will adhere better. I do that to both sides. Now for this mouth plate piece, you don't have to use rubber. You can really use anything. You can use storage bin plastic like I often use. But if you use the storage bin plastic, you're gonna wanna cut this into two pieces. With a stiffer mouth plate, you wanna cut it right on that line so you have two separate pieces. But since this is so flexible, I actually like to keep it all as one piece. That allows the mouth to spring open really nicely. Now I wouldn't recommend that for most puppets, but since this puppet is really small, it seems to work well. It's actually a technique that I love to use in really small puppets. Now this mouth plate piece is gonna go inside the puppet like this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put some glue on here, I'll do that in a moment, and you put it all the way in so it lines up with the front of the nose. And these edges here are what is gonna be attached to the sides so that when you're done, you'll get a puppet that looks kind of like this. So let me glue that together right now. Now once that glue is tacky, we're gonna place it in just like this. I'm gonna bring it in, make sure you're lining up that front notch with the front notch of the nose. And I'm gonna bring in these sides just a little bit so we get good, good attachment there. Just like that. Then I also like to put a little glue on the inside edge of this and then just bend it down. This part's kind of optional, it's just a habit that I have. I like it because it kind of curls the lip in just a little bit around the edges. So there's our finished foam body. Notice that there's no foam for the bottom jaw. Since this is such a small puppet, I find it works much better without it. However, if you want, you can add your own small foam jaw very easily. Now that our foam body is this far along, next I wanna get into the fabric covering. Now the fabric covering has two main pattern pieces for the fabric. But if you arrange them just right, you'll actually be able to do it in one piece. One piece for each side of the puppet, that is. So this is my fleece. I'm gonna put it with the soft side down like this and make sure your stretch is going across this way. Here are the two pattern pieces, and you can see that they go together right here like this. 
But if you line up those notches there and trace the pattern like that, it can save you a little bit of sewing. And then just flip the whole thing over for the other side. And then go ahead and cut out those fabric pieces. If you're sewing on a sewing machine, add some seam allowance. Otherwise, just cut it right on the line. First thing I'm gonna do is pin together and stitch up each of these darts. There's two on this side and two on this side. This one here is the mouth. That's clearly marked on the pattern, so make sure you don't stitch that closed. Although there's some pig puppets whose mouth we might wanna sew shut. Thanks a lot! Make sure to line up the bottom and then pin along the edges evenly. Make sure to line up any notches. Now I'm just gonna stitch these up. So now those darts are all stitched together. Next, I'm gonna stitch these edges together and the front edges just like that. So there's our fabric covering all stitched together. Next, we have to sew on the fabric snout. And when you cut out this fabric piece, you're gonna stitch it all the way around these edges. However, you have to make two small registration marks yourself. And that depends on how wide your mouth plate is down here once the foam is on it. So I'm gonna line this up right here like that. And mine goes from about there to there. So I have to leave that much of a section out. On mine, it's a little bit more than an inch wide. So now I'll trace this out. Make sure to mark the notches. and cut it out. Now that I have this piece, I'm gonna start pinning it to the snout here. Of course, I'm gonna line up that top notch with this center top seam, just like that. And then pin the edges to those notches there. Now, as you can see, this is slightly looser here around this edge. So just make sure you're very lightly gathering it evenly all the way around the snout. So I'll put a pin there and I'll put a pin right there. Just like that. So now I'm gonna stitch from this edge all the way around to here. There we go, our snout is stitched on. Now let's stitch in the fabric mouth plate. Now I wanna make the fabric mouth plate. For that, I'm gonna use some of this velvet. Though you could use felt as well. And then I'm gonna get my fabric mouth plate pattern, which happens to actually be the exact same size as the other one. And then I'll go ahead and trace it out and make sure to mark all the notches. Now before you cut this out, you wanna decide how you are going to sew it in and you have to decide if you want your puppet to have a lip or not. If you want the fabric mouth plate color to come all the way up to the end of the mouth plate, then cut out the pattern as is if you're sewing by hand. If you're sewing on a machine and you want the mouth plate fabric to come all the way to the end, make sure to add some seam allowance. However, if you don't want the fabric to come all the way to the end and you want a little bit of a lip, then trim a little bit in on the inside of this pattern if you're sewing by hand. If you're sewing on a machine and want a lip, just cut out the pattern as is. Today I'm gonna stitch my mouth plate in on a machine. So let me cut it out. And then I'll pin it in, making sure to line up those center seams. Now let me stitch this up on the machine. So 
so that's all stitched on. Now I have to glue it on to the inside of the mouth plate. For that, I'm gonna use some glue just like this. On my puppets for the mouth plate fabric, I like to put glue just around the edges of the fabric and just around the edges of the puppet. That keeps it from wrinkling in the center. Okay, once it's tacky, I'm gonna start placing it in, making sure to line up the center notches. There you go, once it's attached like this, I just have to turn it all the way around. Make sure you pull up on the snout to make sure it comes all the way up and pull on these cheeks to get rid of any wrinkles. Now at this point, we're pretty much done. All that's left is to add the arms, tail, ears, any other facial features that you want. But this is really the base. And even from this point, you can make so many cool changes. You don't have to use the arm patterns that the pig comes with. You could put the arms from the small fry on there. It would look pretty funny with that. Or even the freehand pattern on my website. You can mix and match a lot of pieces from this point to make it any kind of character. Some people add tusks. But for today, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and use the rest of the pattern just how it is. But before I get into the details, I wanna show you one more cool little trick to give it a little bit more stability. The bottom of this puppet ends up being, for my case, at least five inches wide. That's if you print it to the same size. Some people like to scale up the pattern or even scale it down for like a kid's size. But if you print it as is, it's about five inches and I found this ring at a craft store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this into the base just to give it a little bit more form to the body. This is the ring, it's about five inches wide and before I glue it in, I'm just gonna rough it up so the glue sticks to it better. Now before we go on, I should mention you could use anything you want to stiffen it. You could use featherlight boning, some other plastic if you want. And if this ring doesn't fit yours, they come in a bunch of other sizes too. So just bring your puppet and just kind of hold it up and see what fits. But I'm gonna put this into mine, so let me tuck this fabric back. And I'm just gonna put the glue all around this edge here and on my metal. There we go, it's kind of wet fit in. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more before I pinch it around. There we go, that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna use some Fabri-Tac to glue this fabric around it. You can use Fabri-Tac brand or I use this one called 3-in-1. It's pretty much the same thing. And there we are, that looks really good and it's much more sturdy and stable now for this tiny little puppet. Now let's add some arms to this little guy. Let me get out some more fabric just like this and trace out the arm patterns. When you are tracing these out, make sure to also mark the notches like we always do. Make sure to line up the tip there at the notches and then pin it together. And then I'll just stitch it up. There we go, we have the arms all stitched up. Now let's do the little hooves for the top there. You'll find a little hoof pattern just like this. I'm gonna trace that out on the black felt. If you're gonna hand stitch it, you're gonna wanna cut out four, but I'm gonna fold this in half and just trace it twice and stitch it on the machine. To make it easier for you to see, I'm gonna use a contrasting thread too. There we go. And I even left a little spot, you can't quite see it, but a little spot open right there and right there to allow little arm rods to slip in. But now that these are stitched, let me cut them out. Just like that, and now I'll turn these inside out. And then what I wanna do is stitch them to the edge right here. So what you wanna do is actually take this and stick it inside of this hole just like that and have the edge right, and have both edges meeting just like that. And then I'm gonna stitch this together all the way around.
All right, stitched up just like that. Now let's let me turn these inside out completely so we have some nice little pig arms just like that. Now you could use the same foam patterns to stuff these. However, I just like to use some fiber fill. Pretty good. Now let's try attaching the arms to our pig. To do this, I like to use some pins. And what I do is just arrange the arms under the pig wherever I feel like it'll look nice. And I pin it on first so I can stitch it on easily. A good way to help measure too is to measure away from the tip of the dart because it's in the same spot on both sides. So I'm gonna go just, actually I think I'm gonna rest the bottom of the dart right at the top of the seam there. Again, you can put yours wherever you want or maybe you have different types of arms that you're putting on your puppet. So I'll put that there. You can also put the arms more down to the side if you want to, if you like that look. I kind of like it right there. I think that looks good. Now I'm just gonna stitch them on. To attach the arms, I like to do a ladder stitch. Click right here if you want to learn how to do that. And there we have it, the arms are attached. Now that the arms are on, the next thing I like to do are the eyes. I like to do the eyes before I attach the ears because the eyes are so much more important to the character. It's how your character gets the eye focus. That's what really makes them look like they're alive. So it's easy to put the ears anywhere after that. Now there's a lot of ways you could do eyes for this character. You could almost have almost like Kermit-like eyes, these half rounds, put them right up there on the top of the head. That would look really cute. You can get some more shallow eyes like this, maybe put them even more on the side of the head. That would definitely make them more visible from the side view. But me personally, I like to get some round doll heads. Those are wooden balls that have a flat edge on them. And I like to put them right on top of the head like that. So to attach eyes like this, you'll need some sort of a little bracket at the bottom. There are small metal brackets that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, but I like to make my own little ones out of PVC. I just got a piece of four inch pipe, flattened it out with a heat gun and just cut it out in an oval measured out the size of the holes like that. So I have a little bracket like this. It essentially acts like a washer and keeps the eyes from going wonky. First thing you wanna do is measure out exactly where you want it on your puppet. Makes two little dots, so it goes right through like that. I'm gonna use an awl. This is essentially like a screwdriver with a point. And I'm gonna use the awl to kind of puncture a hole through it for the screw to go through. So make a hole in it like that. Just like that. So I'm gonna put these screws into this piece like that. So there we have those screws going right through like that. Now it's easy enough to stick these eyes on and I just have to screw them in tight. There's one. And there is the other. So now we have those two eyes attached, really secure and really strong. And that's how it looks inside with that little flange. Next for the ears, I like to use this headliner foam, but you could also use some thick felt too. And what I'm gonna do is trace out the ears onto this. And then take a piece of the fleece and you wanna fold the fleece in half like this. Place this piece on top. I'm gonna pin these three layers together. And I'm gonna stitch through the entire thickness right on these lines, leaving the bottoms open. All right, so I just stitched through all that. Now what I'm gonna do is cut through all of this thickness. Now when I turn these, I wanna make sure I turn through the pink ends. 
There we go. Some people like to put a little bit of wire in the ears too so they can pose them. You can do that if you want. I'm not gonna do that today. But I am gonna do one little top stitch right through here, just so it seems like there's kind of some cartilage in the top part of the ear. There we go, there's those two little stitch lines. Now I'm going to attach these to my puppet. See, this could easily be some sort of goofy rabbit character if you just put the ears up here and maybe put a funny little nose on top of the snout, especially a little bushy tail, and if you used fur, just an idea. But I'm gonna put the ears more on the side here, like that, so it looks a little bit more piggish. And there we go, we have some little piggly ears. Now before I put the pupils on this little guy, let's make a little piggly wiggly tail. Now there is no pattern for the tail, but I'm just gonna use a little pipe cleaner like this. This one is about four inches long and a little strip of fleece that's a little bit less than an inch wide. And all I'm gonna do is carefully stitch it around this so I can make a little curly tail. But before I do that, I wanna carefully bend both ends of this pipe cleaner so that the point doesn't stick through. There we go, now I'll just start stitching this around. There we go, there's the tail all stitched up. Now let's let me attach it to the back of the pig. And once that's on, you can just curl this up however you want your little pigtail to look. Now before I add the pupils to the eyes, there's actually one more little detail I wanna add. You may have remembered when I cut out the foam, I cut out little holes for the nostrils. But now you can't see it because it's all covered with the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this Fabri-Tac, put a little bit on my finger just like that, and reach inside the puppet and put some of that glue inside that little nostril hole. And what I'm gonna do is poke my other finger in so that I can get that little dent to stay. I'm gonna do that in both of them. There we go, that's filled with glue. So all I have to do is pick this little puppet's nose like this. And now these little dents will stay as long as that glue is dry. You can even darken this uh, with a little airbrush or a little bit of a Sharpie marker too, to give it even more definition. Lastly, the pupils. If you click right here, I have an entire video on pupils and giving your puppet eye focus. So if you want more details on that, you can check out that video. How's that? Now that looks pretty good to me. Oink, 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 oink. <laughs> and there we have our little pig puppet. He's super cute. This is one of my favorite puppets. I really love tiny puppets like this. Now in that little demo, you probably noticed that he had arm rods. I have a couple dedicated videos on how to make arm rods. You can look those up or check in the description down below. If you remember, we left that little hole so they can just slide right in, no problem. And feel free to add more details to this puppet too. You can add a tongue or really whatever you want. And if you like this project, I have tons of puppet builds right here on this YouTube channel. And if you want to learn even more and find out more puppetry news, be sure to check out puppetnerd.com. There we have written tutorials and fun challenges and the latest puppetry news. And of course, if you use any of these techniques at all, I would love to see your puppets. Please Please tag me on Instagram. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.